Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Richard. And I'm Ashley. <laughs> in, in no order of importance, right? Like that was not... No, I thought we were going clockwise. I, to be honest, it's different on each Ooh. of our screens, so I'm not sure how it went. Mine was counterclockwise. Yeah. So yeah, that's very dyslexic right. clockwise on my side. <laughs> or isn't it is it anti-clockwise in Australia? Is there or is that a UK oh, yeah. thing too? Counterclockwise. Yeah. Well, it's counterclockwise for us, but like yeah. Well, it's we also, have an audience in Australia. It's also inches. Like so. <laughs> we've had guests <laughs> and people listen from Australia. That is anyway, true. uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road, overland, rally cars. I'm still trying to get more rally cars. Sorry. <laughs> we had a scheduling conflict with a, a guest. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You know who you are. And I'm going to send him another email. Um, this, we'll also, uh, we're going to, spoiler alert, we're going to see him in the spring. <laughs> spoiler alert, we're going to see each other. <laughs> also that. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know that later. we've ever told Richard Ashley. Ross and I have never been in the same physical space together. What? Yeah, we yeah. started our show. We started the show in January of 2020, and then all of the plans to actually meet up fell through because the world collapsed. Like there was so, a New York auto show. Yeah. There's been other auto shows. There were Moab, Moab trips. There yep. were two separate Iceland trips that have been scrubbed. Like, wow. We so, yeah, we're, we're rolling with the punches here. So yeah. eventually, we'll be in the same time zone. Even like we haven't even done. Yep. No, that's not true. <laughs> no, I've been in, you, I've been in Florida, Florida. So yeah, yeah. that's. It's like those romantic comedies where they're online. I think our wives both tend to think that's exactly what's happening. Our wives do text each other too. So, (laughs) yeah, that also that. Uh, Oh, man. As always, we're socially distant. We've done it. That's the only way we could do the show. I'm in the Midwest, Ross in the Northeast. You guys are in Colorado. Um, we're not, but all of our luggage is. Okay. So, Uh, (laughs) West Coast then. Yeah. Yes. We're in Vancouver right now. Oh, sweet. So you guys went back. Yeah. Back <laughs> in Atlanta, Canada. Yeah. Okay. So that's Why the good is news is your... you could get yeah. home. Yes. We could get to the U.S. and we can get home by flying and okay. plenty of COVID tests along the way. <laughs> yeah. Man. But your luggage can't? Um, we, had, <laughs> we had a little bit of an issue with not getting on the right flight due to a delayed COVID test. Mm. And then... Well, actually, I got my COVID test back and it said negative, but then apparently the machine malfunctioned while they were processing Richard's results. So his were half an hour after mine. And so we missed our flight. Oh, yeah. no. And then there was a yeah. little bit of a problem. We had a friend who we who was on our new flight um, that we knew from Rebel Rally and we saw it over in Expo Mountain West. <laughs> and I asked her what seat she was in, and her seat was 13A, and Ashley's seat was also 13A. Oh, God. That was a, bit of a problem that we needed to get solved. Yeah. So then after that, we finally got on a flight, and we made it home, and none of our luggage showed up. Um, yeah, now we're in a hotel because part of our luggage was all of our camping gear. We had just spent four or five days <laughs> camping in Colorado. Yeah. So I don't have any of my warm clothes. And we don't have any sleeping bags and all that. So <laughs> we're in a hotel until we get some things. And we are kind of living in our truck. Oh, yeah, so that. that is more of an issue to not have your stuff when you're living out of right. your vehicle. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. And then we got randomly selected to do another COVID test. So we had two yesterday um, <laughs> as well, which is fine. I'm happy. I'm happy to do them all day long, you know, but it so- was just after a long day it was quite an experience thanks air canada <laughs> air Can- shout out to air canada <laughs> yeah. west jets up there too right yes. yeah. yeah west jets that like my background's in marketing and west jets always the one that i hear some like crazy marketing story like they did something amazing again it's like the it's the southwest of canada is the way i feel like this is the southwest yeah. airlines of canada southwest yeah. of canada would be vancouver <laughs> That's true Oh God, bro. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you don't even have day. kids for dad jokes. What are you doing? No. <laughs> the eye roll was massive there. That was yeah. fantastic, Chris. Welcome it's because I have four kids who t- have taught me how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> that in a decade oh. teaching middle school. We're not going to get into that though. Um, <laughs> there is industry news out. Uh, sorry. We're, just... see, because you're returning, we're just, com- we're completely relaxed. Um, mm-hmm. 
Ford Raptor reviews hit today, and you could definitely tell today was the day of the embargo lift because my timeline was just regurgitated full of oh yeah, orange and blue truck or red and blue yeah. trucks constantly. Probably two or four of the same trucks that are just you know mostly airborne, like anywhere from two to so, so okay. Some of the pictures that people posted, and I know they're Ford press shots, and they're probably taken from like down below the dunes, but they have like there's air time in some of those photos. You know, and, and you, you can't really tell necessarily if it's the 35 or the 37s on those, but there's a lot of a lot of gap in sky between ground and vehicle. Well, I felt like they had to 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 jump it because of TRX launch. Like they had to show we're still here, we're still crazy. Mm-hmm. The problem but, is now I think we're just conditioned. To the fact that we have to jump all our vehicles all the time. This is all I know. Who is we? <laughs> yeah, with the collective, you're speaking how, on behalf of how who? high does all Little Red get? Let's point that out. <laughs> on, on What's purpose. the highest that, uh, that you've jumped a vehicle? Uh, that, that, uh, my vehicle, somebody else's vehicle. Oh, wow. Uh, somebody well, else's for both? sure. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, what are, I'd like to hear the answers to both, both of them. <laughs> uh, so I think the first vehicle i ever jumped on purpose was uh graham's graham from gfc his raptor that makes sense um he's a little bit of us he likes to scumbag people even when in his own vehicles so that works out well um and then i mostly our trucks probably been on the ground most of the time Uh, yeah 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 um (laughs) now the suspension's pretty decent Mm -hmm. so even if it did get airborne i probably wouldn't have noticed okay (laughs) well I'm Googling so fast for Graham's truck right now. <laughs> <laughs> you just have a, uh, I don't know, another box to check off on the uh, to-do list for the truck. <laughs> It'll literally over landing. That's how you do it. <laughs> over landing. I got that air was, in my avalanche once and it probably made the worst noises that I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's 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 not a big picture, but I actually have a picture of Graham's truck in the air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, is it. yeah. that wasn't me that time, but uh, yes, it looked exactly like that. Yeah, Raptors are fun. The the good news is the reviews are it's still good. Perfect. Mm. The reviews basically say it's half as good between old Raptor and T R X, okay. which is uh, but not know. not the full price. Like, did the price follow how good the? It's like eighty five percent T R X. Okay. So I don't know. I think if uh, if the four of us sat down and had brainstormed on what we expected from Bron- from Bronco, Jesus! Oh, I you caught it again. It. You I caught it, it again. Last week last, I said Bronco. I anytime you. I want to say Raptor. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, no, I, I, it's catching. It's hard. Uh, it's hard. Uh, uh, um, right there. Oh, brainwashing. Yeah, exactly. It's Ford marketing speak. Anything that has Ford and off-road is Bronco. But uh, no, I think, you know, off-road reviews are getting weird. It's like, there's no, 10 years ago when the Raptor came out, there were huge jumps. Also pun in, uh, you know. Suspension like, technology. So, yeah. And, and who moved the bar in terms of what these things can do. And now we're just getting to like the incremental, you know, little tag on the next bit. So I don't know. Raptor is good. I still can't fit all four kids in it. <laughs> uh, not going to be a daily driver. <laughs> no, probably not. Well, it also doesn't sound as horrible from the videos I've heard, which is nice. This is a suspension setup that's underneath. I go to Dan Edmonds if we're going to talk suspension. Ross is talking movable parts. Thanks, Dan. I, I didn't know there were three tubes that came out of the muffler though did you see the picture that dan sent me that i sent you of the exhaust i'll send it i'll let me loop it back to you you guys will appreciate this too this is uh this is what the underside oh god please hold (laughs) (laughs) i'm not Not awkward at all not not good at multitasking that's all right i don't know about the listeners i just i (laughs) Ross, I'm blanking on which photo you sent me. It's on your uh, Slack chat now. So those 
three <laughs> pipes that come out of the muffler are it they spent more time on that than most companies spend on like pretty much everything else <laughs> i don't is this just for acoustics it's to make them equal length so it no longer sounds like a uh sad trombone every time you step on the gas oh. <laughs> don't don't subarus have une, uneven yes but those are also flat engines and That's this true. is a v engine i would rather have the subaru sound <laughs> and yeah yeah oh yeah of course can you imagine a raptor with just like a flat four or flat six sound It'd be hysterical sounds fantastic what's the yeah. issue with <laughs> That's every, after every rally race I go to, then like I spend the next week going, I hear a Subaru. Like, because you, you literally spend a weekend yearning to hear it out of the woods well, to know something's coming by, right? Like, you guys are in the Northwest, so you know what it's like. I'll be here. I think that's the Northeast. It's like, oh, a loud car. Oh, yeah, that's a Subaru. My, yeah. my oldest uh, turned 13 over the summer. So he's, we're starting to quickly like have to start to think about adding a vehicle for him. Um, is that why you're looking at a lot of Nevas? No, that's not why I'm looking at a lot of Nevas. Those are toys for <laughs> those are toys for me to just be underpowered and horrible. I didn't know that engine was based off a of Fiat, by the way. Anyway, um, I've been I started to browse like Outback listings. So just like, but can I make it sound like a WRX? Like they can't be that hard. Oh no, worth a just, shot. Yeah, catback exhaust done. Yeah, exactly. And then he's surrounded in like Subaru safety stuff. So. And uh, yeah, anyways, <laughs> completely off topic. Yeah. That's the end um, of the industry news. We'll talk. We can talk about that D Max thing some other time. Skip D Max. Skip the D Max because I posted it in our show notes and decided to just not read the actual press release. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Isuzu's making an Arctic truck, basically. Yeah, cool. like a like a factory. Oh, from the factory Arctic truck. Yeah, like they. Wow. They even have the five thousand mile warranty. They even have the Arctic Trek branding on it, and of course, none of the images are now loading for me. Mm. Well, if you would let me share my screen, then I would show you the images. I, I'm not that good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're in rare form tonight. I apologize. Right. You I guys like got it. this. <laughs> we'll just do the regular Google search then. Uh, yeah. And that's not helpful. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's not a particularly attractive vehicle, so mm. not really. Uh, Just imagine much. an Arctic Trek version of an Isuzu instead of a Hilux. Right. I got one. It's a stock image. If it'll load, I will share it. There we go. Right. Done. Sound effects tonight. Oh, yeah. It looks good. Interesting. Kind of that. Mostly it, that. Yeah, it looks exactly like you describe it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Only took like 85 podcasts to get good at this. <laughs> I'm also like, where is this? Yeah, it's far from the Arctic is all I can. Right. This it's is, very, looks like continental Europe. Green. Yep. This I is like Scotland. This cornfield with some sort of whatever this is. Here. Yeah. I, yeah. Electricity or yeah. I don't know. Power lines. Power lines. The yeah. Isuzu cornfield. The drop. buildings to the left <laughs> say Central Europe to me, but... <gasps> Yeah, fair. Yeah, I like how he's sort of off the road with one tire. <laughs> it's the the glamour shot, the mall crawler. Yep. There's yeah. the yeah. seen tractors behind the photographer saying, "Get <laughs> out of my way." Yeah. I don't, I've it's never done anything like that before. Front like three quarters. <laughs> yeah, front yeah, three quarters. For, yeah, he's even got the the wheel turned just enough just to get mm. you the profile of the wheel. Like he's exactly. <laughs> I don't want it to be too obvious. Yeah, I am curious though. Is that did they just duplicate exactly what's on the grill twice to to make the grill it does look like it's repeated just about everywhere yeah it looks Save. like the top portion is the bottom portion yeah uh it looks like they've had them for press availability because there are a bunch that uh this is a, a youtube thumbnail so somebody's been driving it even though the press <laughs> oh, we just found the press release so i don't know somebody's had a hold of this thing Interesting. Hmm. But so it's it an actual Arctic truck, though. Built by Arctic trucks? It, I, I, 
it's got the Arc to Truck logo on the on the seat back uh, headrest there. So I think it's built by a Zuzu. I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah, then probably just assembled. They, Arctic Truck probably just puts on the fenders and yeah, mm. suspensions. Yeah. Are there parts of Iceland that are flat enough to take that photo we were looking at earlier? I don't. I don't know. I've never been. I know nothing. I I, I was supposed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid pandemic. <laughs> But yeah, I know Arctic Press makes some cool, smaller tired vehicles as well. I think they've got some Lexuses and such. Is that so. a Lexi when it's a plural? Lexi? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is something that I don't know the answer to. No. <laughs> Lexuses always sounds best to me. Yeah, um, I think it's Lexuses. <laughs> <laughs> is it moose or moose? <laughs> Moosin. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't even know. Do you not know that stand up? I can't say I do. Oh, no. it's, from, it's from Brian Regan years ago when he's talking about how dumb he is in school. And they're like, it's like third grade. And they're like asking him how to like pluralize word. And somebody, he messed up ox because that's oxen, right? And so they're like, Brian, what's the plural for moose? Moosen. Anyway, <laughs> terrible. It's Brian Regan's joke and it's fantastic when you hear it. So, okay. Uh, okay. No, <laughs> <laughs> i'll add God. that to the list to watch that it. was my my 13 year old started getting the stand-up and i was like yes you can go listen to brian regan he's clean you can <laughs> like him gaffigan burbiglia like well actually burbiglia says some customers, but that's fine anyway completely off the rails tonight mm. <laughs> I, I like it this way <laughs> it's there's zero pressure on you guys so <laughs> yeah seriously uh, <laughs> ross, has, ross has news but he doesn't want to share it yet okay. so he, he wrote no but he, by the time at which this goes live, there will have been news. This will, yeah, this will be next, not tomorrow, but the next Wednesday. So was that the ninth? So the ninth. No, eighth. Eight. So theoretically, on the day <laughs> on which this is posted, hypothetically, my Jeep will have arrived. and But not the Jeep that listeners are expecting. No. Not at all. Oh. Uh, mm. <laughs> These are not the deep you've been expecting. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Jedi mind tricks. Um, <laughs> no, I, I ordered a JL Rubicon uh, Unlimited and uh, decided for some reason that it would be a good idea to also buy a house. So, <laughs> so canceled the Jeep order and have uh, subsequently bought the 2012 rubicon not rubicon jesus uh wrangler sport off of dan edmonds so that by the time that this goes live the vehicle in that picture should hopefully be <laughs> in the parking lot outside here that's awesome and, uh, and concurrently of course i i haven't owned a vehicle in like almost three months now and uh the jeep will arrive on Let's see. The Jeep's going to arrive two days from when we're recording the show. And then on Monday, I have a press car rotation that starts Monday and doesn't end for six weeks. What? So, uh, yeah. Six wow. weeks? Six weeks. Plus, What are you getting for six plus weeks? Plus three ATVs. Oh, no, no. That's all the stuff. Okay, got it. Yeah. Infinity <laughs> QX80, uh, GMC, Yukon Denali Diesel, Corvette C8 convertible. I don't know why. <laughs> um, thank you. Because Walker, they said yes. For approving that. <laughs> uh, Defender, Pathfinder, Frontier, and then also a Can Am Defender, unrelated to the Land Rover Defender, and a Yamaha YFZ, and also a, or a Raptor and a Grizzly. Wow. Uh, and I work from home, which means my total mileage that I'm going to put on these vehicles is not. Is it, it, uh, I'm still the most so, excited about the Frontier. I'm the most excited yeah. about the D90. I think Jeff pointed out the deficiencies in a D90. The D90's deficiencies, as per his evaluation, were that it was difficult to get his child in the back. Right. That um, exists in my world. I have no child. And also, his, his, I thought his issue was he couldn't get the seats to fold down flat enough to get his camping gear in it. Oh, it was shot. It, I think we'll have to ask him back. Anyways, all of this is imaginary because none of it's happened yet. We're just like speculating. Um, 
Well, something has happened. That Jeep is on its way to you. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the, the transaction the occurred. Up or it didn't. Yeah. No, the transaction already occurred. It's just a matter exactly. of if it shows up in one piece or not. <laughs> so if I made it to the DMV. Which it's hilarious to me. Like, so Ross bought the Forerunner for me last fall. October. Okay. So I, I sold you a four. That was in yeah. Connecticut, like 12 to 15 hours later. It was like scary. Soon. And the guy yeah. was like, I'm going to Colorado first. And I went, what? Yeah. Like the, the driver didn't speak great English when he picked it up. And then he was like, I'm going to Colorado first. And I was like, okay. And then he was like, it's here. And I was doing the math. And I was like, that did, guy did the three, 300 miles an hour to go to Colorado and then all the way back to Connecticut. I think like, he smoked as many cigarettes as the number of words that he spoke to me. Um, <laughs> perfect. Yeah. So I has got a Jeep. It's news. Oh, hopefully. Thank you. Hopefully. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. We uh, just spent more time than we've ever spent in a Jeep. That's true. Ooh. We yeah. can jump to that right yes, now if you'd like let's to. Let's do that. The show uh, notes don't have to be linear. Oh. Oh, oh they're nice. not. They're not. Yeah. So prior to this Jeep, what was your Jeep experience? We, we rented a Jeep in Hawaii one time. It was garbage. And it was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think the next Jeep we spent a bunch was. Of Jeep? No. Uh, Expedition Overland had a Gladiator. Yes. Expedition Overland had a Gladiator? Yeah, yes. A couple years ago. I did. Really? And I drove it and you drove it, didn't yeah. you? Hmm. Yeah, they did a yeah, little icon suspension and PCOR tray and canopy and 37s. So oh, we did they... some of the, was it Christina Lake Trail in Wyoming? Yep. With it. And also I drove some of the, what's the one here? Uh, Whipsaw Trail. Whipsaw Trail in mm. BC. And then we drove Harry's Jeep from yeah, Harry Wagner, his uh, LJ. Yeah, where did we drive that from? We um, Cal- I like an LJ. Yeah, so LJ is uh, his best Jeep. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's his is good, thirty sevens and yeah, Harry Wagner, thirty sevens and Kings. Uh, Harry Harry's situations. Situation. Aha. Yes. Yeah. So the best thing about that LJ. So the nice thing about that's cut like the AEV high mark fenders or fender flares. So it looks stock with 37s. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just super capable. Cheat code for lifting. Yeah. Is the AEV high fenders. So, so yeah. Well, then that is, was, is his orange? It is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that, that was the extent of your Jeep experience. And then, uh, and then. Wait, was so, it his Jeep we drove? I thought it was the other one. That wasn't owned by him. Oh, we also drove that uh, Rocco 4x4, the one on 60s and tons. Yes. Oh, or, uh, 40s and tons. Yeah. 40s. Good Lord. That's like, that's hardly a Jeep. Yes. So, yeah. So, some random, definitely modified Jeeps. So this one was yeah. stock, at least. The 392 Wrangler. Correct. This one was stock. Probably had as much horsepower as all of the other ones you've driven combined. Yeah. yeah. Short, short of being a gladiator. But, but look how stock it looks. It looks very, very <laughs> stock. It looks so boring from the outside. Yeah. Yes, it's very unassuming. Yeah. That's for sure. The problem yeah. is that it, it makes you feel like everybody's trying to race you all the time. Mm. <laughs> you think that in your mind yes. because you yes. have information. That's entirely intrinsic. Did you... <laughs> Did you produce any Instagram reels with that audio clip of the guys like he blinked? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. You should have. <laughs> so I would say, please don't hate me because I know there are Jeep fans out there. But I would say that prior to this Jeep, I was not sold. I totally understood the off road capability. Like, I totally get that. Um, but I found on highway, some of the Jeeps are wandery okay. and felt a bit unsafe in some situations. These, these are things we've heard before. So yeah, yep, keep yes. going. Yep. These are, <laughs> these are uh, validated. Um, what was the other thing? Like the gladiator gladiator was quite yeah, wandery. It definitely chose its own. Yeah. 
and it was a, yeah i didn't like that the other thing was i guess the jeep's a bit different because it's kind of you i guess utilitarian so the inside is simple and obviously things are meant to come off like doors and stuff like that and so when i realized that i couldn't roll my window down on the door i was like what is this but that's just <laughs> thing, used to things like that right yep. so i don't know some of the in certain jeeps i felt like some of the materials seemed cheap but i don't know if that's because it's uh, the intended use and purpose of it you know mm -hmm. what i mean so yeah there's the yep. glad here that's my photo i took it but that's i fine. do think some of the trails <laughs> the trails we did in this i don't i'm not confident that i would have been able to tackle the technical sections of the trail maybe successfully in it in something else hmm. but i don't know yeah it's hard, just, to, hard, hard to argue with front rear lockers and right. sway bar that's true well yeah. like, and you're Why the you? first people that when we talk to like they've actually achieved trail time mm -hmm. everyone else just kind of had it on like press drives around there like I think William had it that yep. who we talked to from Hooniverse, like he had it around DC. Like, yeah, he drove it on the street and he, he didn't get it to like some street. dirt roads, but like, that's a legit trail. You guys were in the mountains. Like, yep. That was Red Cone up in Colorado. Mm. Yeah, we spent. Yeah, that was last week. We spent with the 392. Four nights. That in was it. A... Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So we flew and picked it up and immediately went out into the mountains in Colorado and just like flip the back seat down and put two blow up air mattresses in with sleeping bags and we just slept in the back wait so is that in the colorado press fleet right now probably mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna need a contact because i'm supposed to go to colorado and also trying <laughs> to drive red cone <laughs> oh yeah. yeah so if that one's full of dust and <laughs> like <laughs> If that if those BFGs um, have uh, like four thirty seconds left, <laughs> they were quite torn up by the time we got to that. How that many miles were on it by the time you had seven thousand? Oh, that, okay, that's, so that's seventy five thousand. I say a, press fleets like presser. what times seven, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or ten, depends what it is. So yeah, I don't know. I'm not like a huge off. I don't know what off roader or rock crawl recreational rock crawling. Yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure like i can do it but i don't i'm not like a perf I, i'm not knowledgeable obviously so yeah. you're competing you. in king of the hammers this year is that what i heard <laughs> there like that's i think that's what i heard mid 400 <laughs> oh my gosh. we know some yeah, people wait you know not, people wait we're not well, yeah four by four i don't know what to say i don't yeah I don't we, know we don't we don't go four-wheeling on right. purpose yeah unless there's a trailhead or unless there's a we're going in one direction to try to get somewhere right but this was good but like that's, colorado's beautiful yeah so red cone pass i thought was fairly technical i don't know what really hard trails are because mm -hmm. i just don't know <laughs> anyway so it, it, it wasn't black bear out. pass it was an engineer like you're those are the ones that you really got to watch right yeah, those supposedly aren't that tech I'm, aside from the switchbacks oh, aren't super technical they're just mm. you say they're not technical but yeah, right we see flipped different kind of yeah weekly. different kind of technicality yeah technical would be rubicon yeah right i, I think of I don't, I don't know yeah there mm -hmm. were some kind of steep sections and obstacles and sketchy yeah things happening but i thought it was yeah the jeep was... obviously handled it fine yeah so. did you have any of your own vehicles on that trip we did no. not. Did not. We, what we uh, were able to drive across the border still. So, oh, yeah. But but we can't forgot about that. I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As, as vaccine Americans, Canada will let us in, but yet yeah. America's like, no, nah, we're good. Yeah. And that's so funny. We got home yesterday, and it, the CDC was saying was recommending for Americans not to travel to Canada because our COVID rates are super high right now. <laughs> but like, curious. They're actually per what a hundred per a hundred thousand. I think they're like, they're like less than the US's. Less. Yeah. I don't know. I don't to be know. honest, that sounds about right lately. Yeah. But just a hundred percent on point. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, that one. we have a couple of ways of getting our truck across the border that we may try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Is it can it classify as commercial use? Um, we are going to try to get across the border because we have 
for like for business purposes. Right. Yeah. That doesn't mm -hmm. work. Then we will uh, ship it. Okay. Mm. And shipping seems to be drop it off at a warehouse on this side of the border. They ship it four miles, and then we pick it up. Pick it up on the <laughs> other side of the border. Yep, that's also. Because we're so close to the border right yeah. now, anyway. Yeah. I'm just imagining it getting on like a, putting it in a container on a train, and it gets off the train, <laughs> like, and you can still see where it came from. <laughs> it's not that far off. It's yeah. Just, yeah, it's not really a train. It's just a guy with a hand cart just moving it across. <laughs> just two just, dudes doing the just thing two from dudes the doing thirties, that up, like something from Blazing yeah. Saddles, like. Yes. <laughs> Oh, Camp Town God. ladies as they move it across the border. That's it's, oh. yeah. No. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention about the 392 is the performance exhaust. I think it's very important to talk about that because it's like <laughs> the best thing ever. Because <laughs> it's because it sounds good, or yeah, you could turn it on and off, so that's nice. You, it's yeah. at your own. It's under your own control. Yeah, and then it kind of when you're when you kind of are accelerating, but not quickly, it sounds like a sub, like a sub is in your vehicle. Like so sub when you have the music on <laughs> yeah. and you're kind of accelerating, it's like you have two subs and you don't really know if it's your like Billie Eilish song mm. or if you're- So when we have hearing problems <laughs> in the future, we'll know why. Yeah. So you just said uh, the 392 sounds like its own version of a dance club. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Great, I Gee, like well, it. I had an 04 TJ and they used to market the fact that there was a subwoofer in the center console. And I'm like, okay, guys, like, <laughs> okay, I, never, I never got a lot yeah. to hear it. <laughs> yeah. It's, just it's also, this is going to be my first vehicle review. And so I don't really know, obviously I've read them before, but I don't know if some things that I'm going to bring up are ridiculous. Like nobody would ever care about it. That's a hundred percent what you should do then. That's what reviews are for. And <laughs> it's so also like that's what top gear did like if you mm. have some weird quirky bit focus the entire review on the weird quirky <laughs> bit because everybody yeah. else is going to talk about engine specs and random stuff and yeah like yeah every single review of those things has been it's the first v8 wrangler it's full-time four-wheel drive you can't do a burnout unless you're on dirt unless and it has Sean rolling a couple it over almost inches of like yeah and, and hold it almost flipping the thing that's basically where it starts then so if you have that's some not what i'm gonna write about at all. good <laughs> good you're gonna complain about the fact that a nalgene bottle doesn't fit in any of the cup holders that that's really solid yeah good. no like yeah. people like reading about it's random bad. shit like every time you climb into a wrangler there's a good chance you're gonna hit your head on the a pillar or the frame of oh. the roll cage like Wait. that's the kind of stuff people read about you know I did like the A frame. A pillar, a pillar I mean. A pillar frame. Oh my gosh, who, I'm not even qualified to write this article. <laughs> hey, if you're getting you are, paid to do it, yeah. you are doing it. It doesn't matter at that you're point. You're professional. Like, if yeah. <laughs> that works. Anyways, I I thought it was quite good because in the tundra it's very wide and so you can have a blind spot there. Whereas Absolutely. In the desert, better, mm. better, better visibility, which was nice. Um, anyways, I'm going to not talk anymore. You should talk. About it. <laughs> but also, who are you writing for? Yes. Who is this, uh, who's this paid Jeep amazing review coming for? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So during COVID, I decided <laughs> to write more. Um, so yeah, I just started freelance writing more, which was great. And then I thought maybe I should take some courses to learn how to write better. So I did that. And one of the courses was on pitching. So it's mm -hmm. all about like the perfect pitch, sending it into editors and stuff. And the teacher said she did a, um, like a, what's it called? Not a practicum, internship. an internship. When she first started out and she said it was really helpful. And so I thought, well, may as well do that for like three months or something just to see what goes on, on the other side of things, you know? And mm -hmm. so I emailed Tina, who's my editor at Expedition Portal and Overland Journal. And we have a good, <laughs> we have a, <laughs> good with the production. and I said, I'd love to do an internship if you guys ever would consider it. And I guess she talked to the team over there and they said, we don't do unpaid internships. And she said, how about a job? A job. 
Yeah. <laughs> so nailed the perfect pitch. Right. Right. Yeah. So I never have to do a pitch again. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wish but, that was the case. Yeah. The internship. Yeah. Right. Just the the resume just took off from there. Yes. Yep. I mean, so, he also yeah. kind of jumped right to the top in the off road world. So that's yeah, nuts. That's that's pretty amazing. We're very happy for you. And, Thank uh, you. I'm yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like I don't know what's going on, but it's been such a good learning experience so far. Um, cause it's been almost three months. And so, yeah, I've been learning a lot about copy editing and <laughs> a whole bunch of other things. And it's been really great so far. And we have some other exciting things coming down the pipe as well. Um, Ooh, teasers. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm wondering, how many episodes have you guys done for the podcast? Uh, 80, 80, wow. 80, 80, 85. Yeah. Okay. What are your oh, top? Now I know what you're talking three, about. <laughs> three tips on hosting a podcast. Oh, that you I, <laughs> I have an entire email to send you. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, this is 86 as we record right now. This will be our 86th episode. That's um, amazing. Yeah, I'll you and I need to do a Zoom call separate from this. Like I have <laughs> hours to discuss this. Like <laughs> I I will I will say, like, if you started now, you're already you you guys, your powers combined have so many connections already. Mm -hmm. Um you, yes, absolutely you should do it. Um because knowing, knowing, pitching to people you have no, who have no idea who you are can be very awkward sometimes. And some of the emails I've sent, I'll be like, well, it'll be amazing if anybody returns this. And half the time, more than half the time, people get back to you. And you're kind of like, oh, yeah. What? Even like, if it's a very polite no, a lot of the time you're like, oh my God, I can't even, I can't. They believe, responded to me. Response. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I, I, also I, kind of thinking about like, how do you be a good podcast host? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think, I don't know. I seem extroverted in this, but you get a microphone or whatever in front of you and you're interviewing somebody and you're like, hello, my name is Ashley. What's your name? <laughs> That's great. Can you tell me a little bit more about your truck? See, and I think <laughs> the podcast format will do very well to you is once you turn it on, you're just doing a video call with somebody who's yeah. also on a call with you. I think you'll be completely fine just talking. And this thing over here that's not on the screen is just recording what I say, but I'm not, I don't ever pay attention to it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And the amount of times when you're having a, that you've had interviews with people from around the world mm -hmm. and every time I'm listening, I'm like, yeah, this is a podcast. It just sounds <laughs> like a podcast. It's great. Yeah. I have that experience interviewing people for articles from yeah. like they live in Africa right. or Europe or whatever, which is awesome. But I think it, you get like a little, if it's formal, it's a little bit more. Don't let her ever get formal. Just no. get on. No, I'm trying not to do that, but that's where I go <laughs> immediately. I'm like, yes, oh, hello, it's August 31st and we are, I don't know, it's weird. Just think of it as like a phone conversation that you also yeah. happen to be recording. Like it's You're just, just talking to some people you share some crazy weird hobby in common with. Yeah. Pro, pro tip number one, don't throw the date in there. Also that. No, I so if you fuck up when it goes live, then you're not holding yourself to anything. Maybe you need to bounce a week or hold it back a week. Like you can. Do you feel like I had the headphones on and I felt like, have you seen that episode of SNL with Alec Baldwin and Molly Shannon? That's like the sweaty balls one. I exactly. Felt like and they get, they get really close to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. That's, uh -huh. not, that's the, that's going to be it. That's gonna I, like that. it. To me, headphones are to hopefully cut down on any echo that the mic might pick up. So, right. and, and we've adjusted over the years. Is, uh, I, I definitely didn't screw that up in our first episode. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he spent six hours editing the first episode Oops. to try to eliminate as many echoes. As Neither possible. of us noticed until afterwards. And we're like, oh shit. <laughs> yeah. That's how it goes. That's how you learn. Yeah. You make mistakes. It's true. So I'll make a bunch of mistakes and learn from it and it'll be great. And at least with that one, it was just him and me talking and it was salvageable. Like it was, there was time commitment, but it was salvageable. Like mm. by the time we pulled a guest on, we were basically an oiled machine of like how mm. we were going to do it. Like we also have switched platforms, hosting platforms and 
video recording platforms uh, throughout the process too. So that might be something you do as well. <laughs> cool. Oh, seriously, I'll send you an email with all of my all of our mistakes. Oh. Uh, they're my yeah. mistakes, but I'm just going to loop Ross in there too. They're our mistakes now. It's collective. <laughs> Hold on. I, I want to see who our first guest was. Oh. Um, first guest was probably someone we know. It's probably Joel. Probably Joel. Our Australian correspondent. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> it's instead of uh, James May's our man in Japan, it's Joel, our man in Australia. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I think I just, I think that might be the first episode. It might be just our man in Oz. <laughs> our man in Oz. Yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> nice. Oh, the oh man. So yeah, speaking I... of world travel, where have you guys been recently? Um, nowhere. Colorado. Nowhere. <laughs> well, in Colorado. When we were talking to you That's guys, not nowhere. We were living in Calgary, and we were there until May. This past May. Yeah. So we were there for quite some time. And then we were visiting my parents in Kelowna, BC. And then my parents then on Richard's the West Coast. Parents, and then we just went to Colorado. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so not nowhere. Yes. The show, there's not nowhere. So you obviously went to Redcone and such with the Jeep. Where else did you hit in your Colorado travels? So essentially we went down south from Denver, meandered down. I think we went west of the mountains What's monument that? is it what national park is that it's like pike. national forest national forest. pike something or other pine something or other i can't remember it was, dark. it was dark oh pike san isabel could be yeah and then what we went that? It, that was excellent it was nice to be so at that point it was dry and warm mm -hmm. and then <laughs> i think we met up with uh the dometic and onyx off-road crew there or just south of there around monument and looped around west and north did uh red cone down past webster pass i think and then up to um what? Loveland. loveland for overland expo mountain so, well. mm -hmm. yeah which was oh. for his first year yeah. how was it it was great but Pers like selfishly for me it was great because I finally got to see friends I haven't seen in a year or a year and a half and whether that's like friends in the industry or our actual friends met on the road on the road or mm -hmm. I, I like where you know all of my real friends are friends in the industry now oh harsh hopefully none of our friends <laughs> no, no no I'm not I'm not I'm like I'm not rating our friends I'm just saying that <laughs> all of these people everybody's a real friend so it's kind of crazy it's a fun place to be yeah we had this um there was a diy and featured vehicle section and so we spent quite a bit of time there uh just i don't know there are a lot of travelers that hang out in that area and so we could talk to people that have done the pan american highway like us and mm -hmm. reminisce about that or there were some couples that are planning on doing it and so that was cool and mm -hmm. did a few round tables i think yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, I think they uh, they said, well, this is secondhand information, but I think the attendance was close to 10 grand. That's 10,000 people. That's a that's lot of people. So many people. Yeah. Yes. That's two days, right? That's just a Saturday and Sunday? Uh, Friday. Friday as well. Friday as well. Still, that's that's huge numbers for Loveland, Colorado during, right. you know, what's I happening. Kinda, I kind of want to go through and just count the number of max tracks on people's trucks. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple that's for sure yeah there are definitely some right like what is the uh yeah mathematical formula for number of max tracks to <laughs> attendees at an overland expo but I, I started doing the math like when i was in utah like how much money has winnebago made off revel sprinter vans like mm. it has to be millions of dollars because i saw at least 15 to 16 of those things it's 100 grand a pop like oh yeah <laughs> and max tracks are what 150 bucks so uh it's like 300 uh, for a set net, yeah 200 for a set now yeah, yeah. Jeez. exactly okay, so. and, and to give you an idea of how i guess mainstream they are we were with friends who are so far outside of the off-road industry recently mm -hmm. and we were in the back back seat of their kia at the time and we're driving along and our friend uh cole asked oh what are those orange things on the on that guy's Tacoma, or she didn't say Tacoma, she said truck. But, but 
May as well have been. Yeah. And her husband says, those are max tracks. You use them to get out of mud or snow. And I'm just like, what? How do you, how does everybody know this? <laughs> Done very well for themselves. Yeah. They work. I can't believe yeah. that. I, I we, expect that most don't get used, but they do yeah. work. Them. I haven't like, used mine yet. Like, we, we mostly use ours on rental cars and other <laughs> like, on the mini, beach. minivans when they get stuck in the snow in the mountains. That was, yeah. we, we did a trip to Colorado last March and uh, it was when uh, Denver experienced snowmageddon. They got like a foot of snow in a couple mm. of days and we got into the mountains right before all that snow showed up. But before we left town, I threw the max tracks in the back just in case. I didn't know what mm. it was going to be. Yeah, we didn't use them at all. It was, it was completely fine. <laughs> But I was glad I had them. Oh, it's like having a high lift jack, though. Like, oh, don't even look the look. <laughs> a high lift jack with stock bumpers. Yeah, don't even <laughs> high lift jack on the hood. I was um, just gonna say that. Yeah, yeah so, so, so the, lights. Yeah, the best high lift jack on the hood story is the lady yelling at the guy for having his automatic weapon <laughs> track. What? You haven't seen that one? No. <laughs> I've seen it a couple, three times. It's somebody yeah. posting, like somebody's screaming at him about gun rights and about mounting his weapon to the front of the hood. And he then posts the picture and it's the high left jack. Oh, it's God. not a gun at all. I mean, I mean, a lot of people like at the borders of Central and South America oh. thought that our ARB fridge was a printer. Yes. They did. A printer. Yeah. So they're, they're like, does it fax too? <laughs> What we should have done is just put some paper hanging out of it. <laughs> right. So we look into the fridge and see all of this, the food that we weren't supposed to be bringing. Yeah. Exactly. Close it to the door. Yeah. Yes, yeah. you just put a ream of paper on it next time. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah. It's a 3D, uh, 3D cold cut printer. These are not the vegetables you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, no. Speaking of dad uh, jokes. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, Little Red got upgrades, right? Yeah. Little, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that little truck. It's just outside. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Just parked outside in a, small, in a small car parking spot at the hotel. So it's okay. not a compact car spot. It yes. fits perfectly. It's not that far off. It's <laughs> no. not that far off. Yeah. There's six inches between Ashley and I when we're sitting there, sitting beside each other. So. And we're in the tundra and we're like, don't. Why are you so far away me. from me? Mm. that's the funny thing so for for us like we have a sequoia which is based on a tundra yeah and then we have a suburban but they're almost the exact same width but the suburban we feel like we're we can like we're on top of each other where the 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 sequoia it's the exact same thing like, we're like hey, what are you doing over there in the other time zone like really yeah. claustrophobic in the gmt 900 <laughs> seriously so, like the 700 and the 800s they were huge inside then they went to the 900 it was like hmm all the safety stuff completely intruded. Oh, yeah. there he is. But, yeah. yeah, no, I just had a Tundra too, like a month ago on well, and alone. And they got their so, truck back, so right? Come back. Yeah. We did. <laughs> you yeah. finally have your truck back. <laughs> yeah. So that this was yeah, our Tundra Slim Milky. We can get to that name in a minute. But Slim uh, Milky? Yeah, he was <laughs> he was stuck in Montana for a little while during the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I think the last time we talked to you guys it was definitely a point of contention that you guys were short a truck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgot about that. Yeah. But that's okay. We had, we were borrowing Expedition Overlands Tacoma at the time. So the Montana plates were not well received in some small towns of BC they were during the height of the pandemic. <laughs> oh, they, oh, because they thought you guys weren't local. Yeah. No, I swear. I swear. I, it, yeah. it's, if everything's fine. Yeah. We're like, what are you doing on this expedition during a global pandemic? I'm like, I'm just going to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. And I live I'm here. Going to go then somebody is... called the cops on us and bam, even though we had a, we had a really nice um, piece of paper with a note on it and said, we're Canadian citizens, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Here's my phone number, yada, yada. And somebody actually called the cops and the cop was like, I'm sorry to call you about this, but. Can you, can you believe somebody called the cops even with that nice note that you left? <laughs> yes. That's how I you know it's Canada. Oh, yeah. Her name so was weird. Karen. Yeah. So <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah. So, oh, dude. Good now. Yeah. So we don't have to back into parking spots pretending like or try to hide the license plate. Hide the plate. Yeah. But yeah. you we should talk about 
Little Red. Little Red? Yeah. Because yes. he was he was in the shop for a while getting his new. Yes. So I don't know what, what do we. Mean. Yeah. When we came back from South America, we kind of just stripped them down all the canopy and rooftop tent off. Everything was just pretty much at the end of its lifespan. <laughs> and, and we had an old manual suspension in it, which was pretty much, well, it was doing nothing anymore at this point. Just which totally is fair. It had 130,000K yeah. of like fully it loaded rough job. Yeah. And it yeah. also cost yeah. like $1,600 when we bought it. I'll take <laughs> the and, got every cent out of that and more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we got the truck back <laughs> from, yeah, South America, but like, 2016 or whatever that was. And then last year I decided to, or we decided to kind of get it ready for its next trip. So we took off of talk, took off the old torsion bar suspension and did a coilover conversion with the total chaos three and a quarter inch long travel kit. So went from five and a half or six inches of wheel travel to just over 12. So effectively doubling front wheel travel. So just, Raptor just, levels of travel. Yeah. Like within <laughs> Raptor levels of travel, I think. Is that uh, a circle? Is that the company that you guys met on? You're really out there. Total chaos. There was somebody you guys were on with us, a suspension company for you're really out there. Yeah, no, that wasn't it. Okay. It was um bump star, for bump star. Anyway. Oh, uh, that was Deaver. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, and no, um, I have the rear spring set up to put some 62 and a half inch long Deavers in the back, but they're currently a custom 63 inch Chevy spring nice. in the rear. Okay. Yeah. And so two and a half inch icon shocks front rear and secondaries up front. So I'm like too many. So it's kind of dumb for what we're doing, but it's also kind of the coolest thing that we did to the truck. So uh, well, yeah. you did it for a reason. Like we know that we're not going to be rock crawling yeah. with this truck. It's going to be going over really crappy roads in Mongolia. They're full of washboard and potholes for hours and hours and days on end. Yeah. Have we said so, the M word before? Mm -hmm. We have not. Oh, yeah. No. So the whole. I don't think you told. I didn't know that before. No, this hasn't <laughs> yeah. dropped. Our, 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 this our, original not... plan, our, our original plan is oh, still yeah, a that... future plan. Yeah. Our little baby old menu me shocks there. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> we, our plan is to ship to Europe and then probably go down to Morocco, but then drive east through Central Asia and Russia, South okay. Korea, and Japan, and kind of and just bring the truck back to where That's it was amazing. built. Amazing. That's, the that's oh, awesome. That yeah. is so cool. That's the coolest our, truck story ever. Yeah. And our original plan. So we moved out of our apartment February 24th, 2020. I and feel we, like we should have talked about this. We last haven't time. talked. Uh, maybe. Oh, yeah. We did talk about it last time. But yeah. So we moved yeah. out of our apartment, <laughs> took a trip up north uh, to Tuk 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 for Expedition Overland and filmed it. Came back. Mid pandemic happened. Our plan to ship kind of went sideways. And then, uh, yeah. So we're here now. So we're just waiting until we can get the truck to Europe. So we'll see. What... Mm -hmm. We're just waiting patiently. Yeah. So it's now a slightly modified 1990 Toyota pickup. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, fairly sticking with the go fast. Heavily. Yeah. So go fast. Then I did a goose gear interior. So we had a little goose mm -hmm. gear L-shaped bench and kitchen and tried to make it simple yet functional. Mm -hmm. um, the one thing we really, really wanted last trip was some side, some inside living space. Okay. Um, just to get out of the weather, we, we were always jealous of all the people with their vans and Unimog <laughs> and the Beckos and stuff. So um, I don't know. We're stubborn, so we're still taking our truck. <laughs> that essentially got like, um, and now I... it's four hundred twenty thousand k. But in some in some ways we're a little stubborn, but in some ways it's the perfect thing to take still for us. Mm -hmm. It's tiny. It's inconspicuous. It still looks like a Hilux everywhere you go around in the world. Easy to fix. You have parts um, everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even with like, even with the long travel kit, I left all the steering components for all factory Toyota. So we use genuine Toyota tie rod ends and um, Pitman arm and stuff. And just the uppers are uniballs, upper control arms are uniballs in them. So lots of stock stuff. Um, the stuff that's not as super easily field replaceable. So I it, think it's kind of smart. It is. And people mm -hmm. always ask why we weren't taking the Tundra and just because of our experience through like Guatemala and South America, it's just not an appropriate size size. Yeah. I don't think. Yeah. Substantially larger. Yes. Yeah. So 
Mm. And I'm thinking those little tiny European roads. I've never been there, but I've seen pictures and stuff. And I'm yes. assuming the latest Grand Tour episode is yeah. American oh, 70s cars and Renaissance Edinburgh, which doesn't yeah. doesn't work at all. I was on the plane pointing at that and we were not sitting together, but I was like, this is why this is our- <laughs> it's too big and it's overheating. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's fun. It's pretty, it's pretty fun to drive now. That's awesome. I think and it's you- so important too, to know that you can take what you have. You don't need to buy an expensive vehicle and kit it all out to go travel in it. You mm-hmm. can just take your Honda Civic because <laughs> Wherever you go, there will be a Honda Civic there. Yeah, it's usually, a Corolla, anyway. or a Corolla. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, fewer Honda it's, Civic. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm never going to forget Zach Bowman being on a press trip in Mongolia and talking about all of the lifted Priuses that were running around as their daily drivers. It's the greatest car I've Pri-eye. ever heard of. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that. Uh... To me, that's just a giant side by side. Like, yeah, yeah when, we, when we were traveling, when we were traveling down South America. We met every like people who were driving anything from a you know 100 stock 93 Forerunner on bald tires with a three liter and a five speed, all the notoriously inexpensive or uh, um, unreliable and yeah. leaky yeah. items yeah. that Toyota yeah. made in the 90s. Yeah, to you know brand new sportsmobile and or two wheel drive vans or two wheel drive sprinters and everything and i feel like ever all of us had the same trip just in a different vehicle all of us had vehicle problems in one way or another mm-hmm. didn't matter how new the vehicle was mm-hmm. yeah. so we all made it to yeah. where we wanted to go yeah so. you know we as people deeply ingrained in this industry completely lose track of the bigger picture in that for every five people we see on Instagram doing what we're doing with a Tacoma or a, you know, a built forerunner or a land cruiser an 80 or something like that. There's, you are. Yeah. Or yeah. Or that, or, you know, or a G wagon or something or a defender. If you're doing it with a G wagon, call me. You're amazing. Yeah. But they're, they're, for every five of those, there's probably a thousand people not on Instagram that we don't see who are doing it. And a lot of them are doing it in things like super outbacks, you know, or Corollas or, or Camrys. I want my photos to load so I can share the one I took in Glacier. <laughs> that poor CRV. That was so loaded. Oh, oh. Yeah, or CRV, you know, like there's probably more people that have taken RAV4s like Fairbanks to Tierra del Fuego than than people that we'll ever see on social media yeah sure. yeah when we were going up to tuck last winter and it's minus 20 or 25 out the two people we met one was in a, a caravan and one was in equinox those are mm-hmm. those are the other vehicles that were up there an equinox oh. yikes yes yeah. no i mean if, it, if that can do it anything can do it and yeah, yeah chris that that is a that's fantastic that's, that yeah, is a pack, pack. Mule. Backpack. That's what a travel backpack. Like a backpack it looks like when they have the big backpack on the back and one on the front. That exactly. Was the airport. <laughs> okay, with our luggage when we had it. My favorite part is it had New York plates, Ross. You know, my <laughs> wife's mom used to have that era CRV in white. Well, so I'm like that, that could you, be her old car. That's how you definitely know it's New York. The bumper scraped. <laughs> <laughs> No dude that's what I, I the first time i was in new york and i saw all of the crap people put on the back in front of their cars to like protect from parallel parking like i don't even what is happening right now like mm. you guys just aren't good at parallel parking they just they have to do it all the time it oh yeah it's not fit in the tight spots it's, it's yes. all of that and uh overpopulation mostly that also overpopulation for sure yeah too many people not enough space Sweet. I didn't, I seriously, I didn't know that Mongolia was the next step. No. Eventually. One of these days. It's Mm -hmm. so hard to tell when the right time is going to be to ship. Right. Yeah. Everything changes constantly. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is your planning mojo for this trip? Do you have a day in one city and you have to be in the next city or the next town or the next you know, remote camping location. You're just 
you're going to show up in Mongolia and then just go. Well, like start in Europe. But yes, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so last time they're going to start we... actually in North America. <laughs> Too shit. <laughs> Um, uh, when, when we traveled last time, we didn't know any better and we had no ways of make, no means of making any income on the road. So I was working at an engineering firm, downtown Vancouver, I was working as a paralegal and we just saved as much money as we could, which was not a lot in a short period, in a short of, period time. of time. And we left and ran out of money in Costa Rica, flew back for a year, saved some money and then did South America after that. And this time, well, in that well, in that case, we our schedule was whatever we wanted to do for a year, essentially, mm -hmm. um, until the money ran out. And we only planned maybe a week or two in advance because we learned from backpacking trips and just general life that if we plan something too, like we if we're too rigid with the schedule, then we might arrive somewhere and it totally is a flop, and we don't want to stay there, and then we're committed. So we were just, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then this time, since we're working from the road, um, it's going to be a little bit more interesting. I guess we're going to have to feel it all out. But if yeah. Ash is putting in 40 plus hours a week or whatever it's going to be, um, we're going to have to work around that. And then also if a contract gets signed for another project we're doing, that will take up a big pile of my time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have to- I like these what ifs. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna have to yes. adjust. Adjust. And yeah. travel slowly, which is fine with us. Yeah. So I, I, I like the idea of spending three or four days traveling and then settling down for three or four days. Or maybe we have to work five days a week and travel for two. Who knows? I think I think it's gonna bit depend. It but depends. It'll we'll kind of see how the workload is. It'll be a learning experience for us, for sure. I think there are all, you know, the digital nomads and the van lifers and the RVers have already figured this all out. Right. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. have to look to them for guidance of how to make it work the best. I, I immediately jumped to like, does WeBoost do an international plan? Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> do they have the yeah. world plan and the North American plan? Yeah. yeah, I think from what I understand and what I've seen and read, uh, cell phone plans aren't, aren't too expensive everywhere except for Canada. So okay. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> yeah. they're ridiculous here too. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what we'll, we'll do. We'll have our couple of phones and use those and it'll be okay. Yep. Have a nerd help up. It is what it is. And then yeah, we have uh we have reach. And yeah, yeah. And reach, yeah. Always, always, always an in reach. That's always an in reach. That was Every... we talked with Jason from Mountain State Overland last week and that was something he was like well, they're He's like, we're not even that far out. He's like, I definitely carry the inReach. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I found in North America, there we use it more here than we did overseas. Well, yeah, down in South America because it doesn't take long to get outside of cell service. Mm -hmm. So if we're going camping with friends or something like that, we can go out. If we don't have service, we just text them by the inReach. They know our GPS coordinates and they can find us. Right. Yeah, um, that's good. When we were in South America, most of the time, it was just if we were going to be gone for or out of service for five or six days or more, we at least we can text somebody, hey, don't worry about <laughs> us. We're not right. dead. We're just having a good time. Yeah. You can't yeah. hug me. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you bring up Mountain State Overland. I literally today posted a classified feature on the Forerunner. So if anybody's looking that. for a Forerunner for sale. Is it the, the silver one? It's no, gray it's now. Dark, it's gray. Yeah. Black it's metallic, color. dark gray, dark, dark gray, gray metallic, mm. something like that. It does have uh, some, you guys call them decals in America. <laughs> Graphics. Um, <laughs> Graphics. <laughs> that accent was too accurate. <laughs> that was very accurate. <laughs> yeah. We call them decals. 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 Weird. Stickers. Stickers. <laughs> Pasta. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else we got? Toques. Pasta. Yeah, no, it's that's just they got a good looking truck. He didn't really talk about that, but yeah, no, somebody should buy it. It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's good a, price. It's a lot of forerunner for that money. I was not I there. Is, it the, is it the one that he said was the rental? It was supposed to be a rental, but they bell on it. If you get, if you go to Expo, 
If you go to expeditionportal.com, uh, you go to their classified section. I'm only on Instagram right now. I think it's, <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it's on the homepage. Mm -hmm. Googling. <laughs> what hell if I can type? You can Google we... it. I mean, you Googleizer. Uh, oh God, dyslexia has set in. Oh, it's it's the top story. Yeah, it's Ashley's it's name's the right there. Page. I like your self promotion. <laughs> yeah. Did, well, I mean, it, it just says by it's her byline. Like it's okay. I apologize if I lose you guys. My computer is telling me I need to connect to a power source, even though I'm connected to a power source. Uh -oh. <laughs> and I'm gonna this. apologize for my slow internet that is not That's allowing right. this photo what? to load. What is happening? <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I, are you in 1999? He's underground. Oh God, Chris, your 56k is too. This gigabyte a second over here. Redial. Just not dial back in. It's a Napster going. <laughs> so that's you that's think not the rental. She did she say Napster? <laughs> yeah, she did. God, I feel old. Okay. Do you think anybody's gone around the world using directions only from MapQuest? <sighs> oh, MapQuest. exclusively from MapQuest. Oh. Yikes! <laughs> that's not the foreign runner I was thinking of. No, but Jason still has his rental. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot and of rig. On the fleet, I believe from. This is this is his rental. They they will oh, rent this wow. one if you show up in West Virginia. They'll let you rent that truck. Uh, that seems more reasonable for a rental. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yes. Also, he answered the question that had been driving Ross and I both crazy: is how do you get back to your vehicle after oh, you yeah. go white after you go rafting for multiple days oh. at a time? And there are subtle services that will move uh -huh. your vehicle for you, oh. or pick you up and take you back to your vehicle it depends on which type of service you want to go with so can you tell neither of us live on a river <laughs> <laughs> and i so when i was up in glacier uh i kept seeing the same three vehicles stuck by the north the north fork of the flathead river i had to remember memorize every time i drove over it um but there were there were seriously two sprinters and f-150 and another truck that were there every day i drove by and i was like i wonder how they're getting back because they all had raft trailers behind them that were empty of rafts. Fair question. Yeah. Turns out there's a service. Mm. Yeah. Shocking. I'd rather learn to drive a motorcycle than go rafting. Yeah, at least you can drown. That's fair. Well, you might drown if you go through a river crossing. It's really deep. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you need to talk to... I got dark... <laughs> Emmy's <laughs> co-driver then. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, because she rode motorcycles in Morocco. Mm -hmm. That's very cool motorcycles. Cool. Tiny motorcycles. <laughs> like, like, oh. 80s? Yeah, I'll have to ask her about that. I was writing a piece on the Rebel Rally and I looked up their bio on the Rebel website and I was reading her bio and Emmy's bio and I didn't realize that she had driven motorcycles across Africa. Yeah. So cool. She has terrifying stories. Yeah, really can <laughs> like there's a podcast episode where she tells them. <laughs> I think that them. was yeah. That was uh, their first or second time on, but I think both of us were just like jaws down yeah. here like you did what? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Thanks. I was already in awe of her ability to navigate with a compass and a topographical map. <laughs> yeah, I'm also and, and she talked about driving through Morocco on a 50 cc moped, basically. Was it a 50? It it's was something like that. It's I thought it was like a 70 or an 80, even like I'm scrolling through her Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. she yeah, does I'm not mostly in awe. Uh, all of the time during the rebel rally because i never know where i am with the gps <laughs> right <Exactly. laughs> i i give the same answers like you asked about colorado i'm like i think we're in this town or whatever town i, I don't know this, Come this to is her in the tiny so moment awesome. oh my god uh, that's awesome it's like a honda monkey yeah it's they're not big no <laughs> big at all I, yeah, I when I go out, I generally go out with the same guy and I ask Brett to lead all the time. Or I basically say, Brett, where are we going? Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I don't even ask. I'm just like, where I'll just follow you. Yeah. <laughs> Take me somewhere. That's how we work when we're driving. And every, mm. yeah, I like our, our entire trip to well, anywhere we go, but South America, we show up somewhere. Like, this place is amazing. And she's like, I know. 
I'm like, this, but look at this. She's like, I know. This is why we came here. <laughs> That's why I set a waypoint. Yes. <laughs> Where are we? She's like, I don't take you to bad places. You don't. Is it, is it easier traveling with Onyx, though? Because, like, they're literally a mapping company. <laughs> like, uh, so we can't get it here because it's only available in the state. Oh, oh, on the trip, it was easier. Exactly. <laughs> yes, that's what you're asking. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what you're asking. Colorado was great, is what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Navigating was easy on that trip and only that trip. Because <laughs> that's Onyx's exactly. former expedition portal employee, right, Chris? Chris Cordes, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. One, of, one of many employees. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've sent messages. Chris needs to get back to me. Oh, Chris. <laughs> At the time, I think it was right when he was transitioning. So I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll give him some time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's had enough time now. You can get right in there. Well, no, he, he's constantly in the woods based on Instagram. So yes. <laughs> like, I'm never going to get him. I like that. Same, and also, uh, we talked to Scott and Scott was going to come on. Oh. I was just checking the calendar to make sure that I didn't miss anything so I could call him out. <laughs> Who's for Scott? Scott, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, he's back. Like he, he we, we talked to him and he said, Yeah, I'd love to come on. By the way, I'm going to go travel the Pacific first. Right. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, well, that's, There's some good stories there. That yeah. does yeah, count right. as off road, but the problem is he started his own podcast. So <laughs> I, know. Trying to, I know how hard it is to book our show. I, I'm assuming he is also. T- Stress that book in his show. We we just need to do the crossover episode and use it for both. Yeah, true. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which Taylor did for uh you're really out there, which was hilarious to me. Ah, awesome. like, can I can I just use this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just copy and paste and oh. that's he he did his own edit. It was actually I liked his show better than ours. <laughs> oh. Well, Taylor he had his own coffee. Right. Yeah, coffee now, bronco. And he just got married or something. Slash yeah. garage, right? Like he, <laughs> it looked yeah. like he had set up the garage as his own coffee shop. So, <laughs> yeah. And then he's, I think he's also uh, caught like coffee trucks, a remote. So, in his bronco, cool. it's pretty cool. It's I, I literally told him I needed a cup of coffee the other day and he didn't show up with it. So, yeah. How rude. What kind of business is this? Right. This is bullshit. They don't deliver. 20 hours away yeah. uber eats oh, actually i drove by them <laughs> montana's a long way from kansas city it's fair yeah there's this coffee shop it's it's called howdy partner coffee so Aww. good <laughs> I'm so very excited to go back to bozeman and have a cup of coffee from them exactly yeah. Yep. And his that, his that beard slash mustache has gotten much larger from what I remember. Yeah, <laughs> so impressive. My beard gets a little longer than this, and it starts getting really gross. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I figure when I get older, maybe my beard will come in nicer. Need more wisdom. The, yeah. The best automotive writer beard is Mike Musta. Mike Musta, hundred yeah. percent. He literally <laughs> has racing stripes in his beard. Yeah. Can you just do a post talking about how, like, with photos of what he looks like without a beard? Yes, and- like from the 90s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It made me feel not as old uh, as he is. Those, those, uh, <laughs> yeah, those New York pictures made me nostalgic. It's like, oh, God, I remember that. I remember those days. <laughs> the, be- the best part is he and Christian James Hand, who is like, he will tear down music piece by piece, like drums, mm. guitar, oh, went yeah. to the same high school. But yet now somehow run in the same circles 45 plus years later. It's a oh, guesstimate right on time. Off, it's a, that might be. I believe you. A little uh, more years than you. It, it might be older, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like, what the hell, Chris? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Mike understands. Like, he'll, he'll fully admit. Like, <laughs> yeah. We had him and we were supposed to have him and Alana on the same episode because they went yeah. on that road trip together. I mean, it's coming out soon. Right. Like yeah. And I'm like, video, I, yeah. literally, I just want to see the episodes. Yes. Like, I know. We had both talk about it. I want to, I want to watch. Yeah. I, I, I consume something. You know, when I was scrolling before this episode, I, like, I want to watch the episode. <laughs> just give me the episode. Like uh, between that and waiting on episodes of Ted Lasso right now, I just need. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that's good. 
or not? No, no. It is an absolute delight, but it's Sudeikis is from where I'm from. So, mm -hmm. so there are tons of little things in the, well, it's mostly his apparel is like shout outs to local barbecue restaurants. Mm -hmm. uh, there are tons of little things in the show that people in Kansas City are just like, oh my God, he did it wow. again. So, uh, <laughs> because no one, like we're American. Yeah, sounds yeah. like it. We're in his accent is not from Kansas City in the show, which is the best part, but uh, it's very, yeah. It is uh, a joy to watch, not because I'm from here, but for other people in general, like it's just, it's kind of some positivity in a world that has zero positivity most of the that time. It's literally so. on fire. Mm. Yeah, like it's yeah. literally melting. Literally, Which, yeah, literally. Yeah. When, when I was in Montana, like it felt like the world was on fire because everything was full of wildfire haze and there were Blackhawks flying over daily with water buckets. Yep. Like, where are you, yeah. where are you going there, bud? Where are you? <laughs> Do I need to know about where you're going with that water? Bucket? Just douse the whole planet, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they just did that, that in New Orleans. BC yeah. was bad this summer. It was really bad this summer. But yeah, this Ross, summer. Ross is about to get I'm a about week's to get worth that. of yeah. rain in two days. So oh yeah. A week. Yeah. That's like a summer's worth of rain in two days. And it's not even bad. Like you bought a boat instead of a Jeep. Seriously. Which that's what the jokes were about the, uh, boats. Jeeps with snorkels or boats? Yeah, Jeeps. Oh, no. Too much. Anybody watch uh, watch what was supposed to be the F1 race on Sunday? I. <gasps> you didn't. You literally missed nothing. It could have been a boat race. Watch right. qualifying. That's yeah, all qualifying. you'll need. So watch qualif qualifying was. Actually, was I watch qualifying it highlights, yeah. Okay, I fell asleep just, because I was so tired in the middle. Of it. Literally, yeah. just watch qualifying. The, yeah, don't, just watch qualifying. You don't have to watch it's, any of the uh, race coverage. Watch oh. the, watch the race highlights. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll watch the seven right. minutes of the highlights. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. you can watch, watch qualifying in real time, but then you yeah, we'll definitely watch the highlights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, that's a, that's really about it. But yeah, wow. boat race. My my man Lando had a rough day. <sighs> yeah, oh. man. Yeah, man. Did you guys know that there was a seafaring jeep that traveled like? some of the Pan American Highway in Indonesia, like back in the, um, was it 50s? What? And the couple that what? used it, they worked for National Geographic and stuff. Like, it's, what it, what's the Oh, let me find it. There's it, a- it, Chris is gonna it was have to amphibious? I'm, I'm trying. Yeah, it was amphibious and they had a German Shepherd. What? What was the dog's name? Yeah. This is the most important part. Uh. <laughs> Captain. It had to be captain. They had a, boat, a jeep that went in the water. It had to be captain <laughs> or sergeant, like <laughs> commander. Like it had to be military related. Uh, uh, so they wrote a book called The Drums of Tonkin: The Adventures in Indonesia. T O N K I N. Uh, it was Helen and Frank Schreider and their German shepherd Dina. I'm going to do an article for uh, an article on them because it's really cool and actually. Um, Helen is still alive. Really? Whoa. Yeah. Pretty and weird. this was in the 50s? Early 60s. No, this was oh, in the their, Indonesia they did in the 1960s. So I think they did the Pan, like the Pan American got, trip. I got the book cover at least. Yeah. yeah. Look at that beast. That's a Jeep? Somewhere mm -hmm. underneath it. <laughs> cool. That's a huge dog. <laughs> yeah. That is a big dog, actually. <laughs> Or it's a tiny they, Jeep and they're miniature. Yeah, they're also really small people. <laughs> what is that on the like uh, the front left? Is that a radio of some sort? Yeah, if you Google their uh, name, all sorts of crazy pictures comes up. Come really? Like there's this one on Wikipedia uh -huh. where their vehicle is like half submerged underwater. What? Jesus. Yeah, that's really cool. So that'll that'll be a uh, expo feature. <gasps> yeah. Okay. Cool. Very yeah, much looking really forward excited. to that. Okay. I've been really diving into the history of overlanding because I think, well, what do you if you guys think about the history of overlanding, what comes up for you? You mean you and uh, McGregor and his buddy? No, no, no. Further back than that. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, like, that was the sarcastic joke. Uh, Camel me, Trophy, if you go back like 30 years. 
Yeah. See, and that, um, this is where my Midwest education gets in the way because the pioneers and Conestoga wagons, the Oregon Trail is where oh, my mind yeah. goes to. But that's because that's that. been pounded into my head since the second grade right. or grade two. Focus um, on that, and you know, instead of like you know, massive cultural things. Right. So, yeah. And well, and then like degradation of society. But. First tribes and. Thanks first people and all that stuff uh-huh. um uh-huh. what about international what about oh, international. the history of early modern overlanding marco polo um <laughs> wait no you said modern that can't be uh that's also it's also not land is that see now i come back to like world war ii like traveling through the mountains of burma type things mm. of of trying to supply runs then like there's camels with this Jeep that drove through the water. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There's, you make a good point in that there probably is lack of coverage and general knowledge in, in our community of where this all started. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Because who else, who have you been writing about? So I think people really go towards the first overland trip from London to Singapore, the Oxford Cambridge guys, which I totally yeah. get like the coolest trip ever however that starts with the british empire and then as we all know the british empire is what we're supposed to pay attention to so that's right there, <laughs> there are other trips of white that dudes happened. yeah and on the and same still. time you know there was like barbara toy and she traveled in a series one by herself through saudi arabia and syria and she was one of the first western women to go through saudi arabia to be able to travel there um, and she was traveling, I think she did one of her trips before the Oxford Cambridge guys even left. And then there were two American women who traveled. They, I think, circumnavigate. No, they didn't circumnavigate. I forget. Anyways, they traveled around Africa in a Jeep and they actually met up. They came all the way up to, I think it was Tunisia and ran into the Oxford Cambridge Africa expedition guys. And they were just starting out. Oh, wow. And- the women were just coming back and mm-hmm. that was a really cool find in one of their books. Uh-huh. Um, there's another, lots of women traveling in like the thirties from mm-hmm. Germany or the UK across. That's, that's what I, I swear. I saw a video on Petrolicious years ago and it was a German lady mm-hmm. who, and at some point had cancer and had to go back to Germany to get treatment and then went mm-hmm. back to traveling Oh wow! Yeah. Um, I'll hundred percent send you the link. <laughs> well, who? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, who was that? It was Emmy and was it Emmy and Lynn? That Emmy and the, Lynn replicated that lady. They did um, that Haggerty story going cross country in like a Model A or something in the late was it late twenties, early thirties, or was it later than that? Um, I thought it was earlier than that. I thought it was like nine. 1908 was the one that she wrote was, for hemmings or something yes. it was a Haggerty article Are you sure? uh, i have please hold <laughs> does he have the magazine um there is a well, there were these two women that i'm reading about right now that took a motorcycle and a sidecar from london to south africa in That's like awesome 19 19- I forget it early, like maybe before the twenties. My favorite part is it doesn't matter what year you put there. I'm they get props no matter what. <laughs> like it's if you do the trip now, you get props. Like yeah. And the crazy thing was they had a so they had the motorcycle, the sidecar, and they were pulling a trailer across the Sahara Desert. So I'm reading this book and I'm like, you guys are nuts. Like this is it, this is such an intense trip. Yeah. And then they had to check in along the way to make sure they didn't die. And then like a search party would go looking for them. And if the Ross, search and rescue had to go and get them, get they search- would have to pay. So they only had a certain amount of time. Yeah, nice. I saw yeah, that one. yeah, yeah. It's, that's 1909 is the date on that one. 1909, wow. Alice Ramsey became the first woman to drive across America. And a 1906 Maxwell is what the vehicle was. God, that must've been miserable. I'll bet it was. <laughs> Well, you can ask Lynn because she'll be on next week. But we already know Lynn said it was miserable. Lynn said it was miserable. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And what was it? You did the article in the first. Oh, wow. 
That's that's Lynn and Emmy recreating. That's so that's good. Amazing. Yeah, this is not the actual <laughs> footage. <laughs> Which I'm pretty sure that's in the article too. I would there love she is. to create a trip like that, you know, like Barbara Toy's trip, but I can't really go through Syria or Saudi or Yemen mm. right now, obviously. The Land Rover mm. Series One, that would be so uncomfortable. But yeah, series ones are not, there's not a lot of comfort no it's a tractor yeah i love the idea of recreating a trip like that though yeah that's why i like the section of it when even when ray and his wife like ray highland and his wife marianne and their three kids at the time Mm -hmm. took a series one from london to singapore oh my god oh my gosh yeah yeah that uh there's somebody that is it is it them am i thinking of the same one they have the yellow one and it, they're going like all over the world. And it's an Overland Journal, like oh, Land Cruising that's Adventure. Land Cruising Adventure. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I really looks, looks brutal. Yeah. Those two are legendary. They've been on the road a long time. Yeah, they are legendary. It's amazing. Is that one a Land Cruiser? Yeah, yeah. Land yeah. Cruising Adventure. Yeah, I definitely read about them because they had they they had been in like. Siberia in the winter Mm -hmm. and so I wrote about that from (laughs) Mm universe years ago now they're in according to their website uh Kyrgyzstan yeah Yeah. Mm. I said that wrong I apologize said it Kyrgyzstan Kyrgyzstan yep the Midwest is showing (laughs) it's great I used to tell my middle school students all the time that uh all newscasters are actually from the Midwest because we have the least accent, and they'd be like, "No, we don't." Like, <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> I still want to find this German lady on Petra uh, Wishes. I really want to see it. I found it. Yes. <laughs> that was so much excitement. <laughs> I found it. Well, my favorite part is like I I've already watched it, so I was just having to find the the one that I had uh, already watched. Find the find the red line at the bottom. And it's coming to your inbox now. Yes. <laughs> I, I was just waiting for the screen to be shared, but so no. like the, the crappy part is like if you share YouTube in YouTube. Uh, oh, it's, it's a video. Like it. It's a video. Yeah, it's a it's video. A, oh, it's well. rights. Yeah. Copyright. Yeah. So and plus I didn't really need to promote Disney Plus any more than they needed. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. We're probably doing okay. Yeah. They, yeah. They're they're getting by. My kids are watching it, so. Uh, which hilariously, the last time we had Joel on, I had to thank him for the thing that my kids watch the most now is an Australian-based cartoon from the BBC. That's amazing. So amazing. Yeah, Bluey. Oh, uh, it's about. Uh, they look like dingoes, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> they're dogs. They're dog-based. They're they're kind of Australian. To be honest, they're Australian cattle dogs is what they are, but um, they're spotted like them. Anyway. What a life you lead! I the, I just don't know anything about it. You oh, yeah, you've dodged a bullet is the way I would. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people keep saying. Oh, don't, we don't have to have them. It's it's okay. <laughs> Like literally, right. it's they're right behind you. you. They're walking behind you. No, <laughs> they know you're wife. talking about them. That was my wife. They're all in bed. <laughs> uh huh. Sure, they are. Way they're gonna listen to this. To, they're gonna listen to this wow. next week, and you're gonna That's wake up and dude, the house I'm, is gonna be empty. You guys can tell I've taken away three dog bones tonight. He keeps finding dog bones to eat behind me. Oh. <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna keep taking it because like, I I know like Ross has said before they can hear him. So like I have to every time he starts. <laughs> He never eats during the day. Like he'll never chew on a dog bone during the day. It's only when we record the show, he's like, "Hey, you know what? I should chew on a dog bone." I'm like, no, like that. Mm, that's pretty funny. He just wants to be on the podcast. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't deserve it. <laughs> he's going to the dog park in the morning. He'll be fine. <laughs> uh, do you guys have anything you want to plug other than obviously read whatever Ashley writes on Overland Expo? I think yeah. Overland Journal. Oh man, gotta get it right. Uh, well, Both. it's a good yeah. Yeah, that was a combination of the two. Yeah, yeah. It's it's every slip. Expedition Overland. Portal, Overland Journal. It's all the same media company. 
Yes. <laughs> it's always fun trying to explain to our families what we do. Oh. When it's like, oh yeah, yeah we, we film for uh, Expedition Overland. Yep. Ashley wrote the Expedition Portal and Overland Journal, which is part of Overland International. <laughs> and their their question literally needs to be, uh, do you pay your bills? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you right now? Yes. <laughs> I guess you can find us on Instagram. Hey, Instagram is always good. So and we have a website. Yeah, so I'm Desta Glory, and Ashley is Desta Glory underscore Ash. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, and that's it right now. Well, YouTube a little bit. But we've never post there yet. Yes. Yet. This yet. Thing, and just uh, continuing the teasers. Yes. Yeah. Watch those. Um, and I guess that's it. That's all. <clears throat> Go mm -hmm. for it now. It's a very simple uh, plug. <laughs> yeah. We have a lot going on. Well, we have a lot of things we're doing in the next little while. But yeah, we are gonna, we're going to be at Overland Expo West is the plan. As long as we get our truck across the border in one of the many ways that we have an option to do so. Um, and then I don't know if the, this other thing is legit. Yeah, I won't say it. Uh, we're going to be at Rebel Rally. Cool. Um, Which yeah. is so cool. October? Mid-October. Mid so we get to hang out with all our friends like Emmy and Lynn, mm -hmm. Rebecca. Yep. Super cool. In a nice yeah. outdoor space. Yep. Doing yeah. things. Socially Harry distant. Wagner. Yeah. 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 It's very <laughs> socially distant. Which Rebel. the fact that they ran the rally last year, I was like, I have no complaints now for yeah, them. Like they can run that thing outside all the time. I'm good. Exactly. It was yeah, they did success. a really good job of making everything very safe and we felt really comfortable and mm -hmm. they did a good job in reacting to the situation really quickly and adapting the event to yeah, the and Emmy's coming back with a Rivian, right? I think I'm uh, not sure. I feel... Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I thought she said that. I, I love how I don't know who said what to who. Yeah. Uh... Chris knows something. <laughs> I thought she said that. She may have it based on it facts. Like based on facts. Be accurate. If yeah. if they came back, they would come back with them. It my, seems plausible. My favorite exactly. part yeah. of yeah. Uh, Johnny Lieberman did the whole like I drove the Rivian truck today first drive I and everybody went saw that no you didn't and he did it last October yeah. did he shown the door. revise it because on he, Instagram he, I thought yeah, he, he revised it he did edit in the middle it. of his he did the edit. I was like Johnny yeah. Johnny's also someone we're trying to get back on the show but good lord his schedule is full I bet mm -hmm. and every, every time I pitch him a date he goes no I'm like Johnny I, I can't see your schedule bud like you have to actually <laughs> Can you tell me dates? So good. Uh, but Love that them. short film that um, Rivian did on Rebel last year was fantastic. I yeah, it was so cool. I definitely have shown it to many people. <laughs> yes, there are very few people who have been allowed to film that event, and Rivian did a great job. Mm -hmm. They did. Yeah, so that's what I I use that and to explain to people what it is, and I also use Lynn's article she wrote for Drive. Years yes. and years ago, yeah. To explain what the rebel is like. That one, I think, included a lot of crying and being stuck in the dunes for hours. <laughs> um, but that yeah. sums it up. So my my favorite part of that is we're having Lynn and Sedona on next week. Oh, awesome. Donuts, because Sedona wrote for uh, Hooniverse about her Baja bug, and so yeah. we're like, we'll just oh, get everyone so together. Good, okay. yes. I did see Those that. Two. It was very cool. Yeah. And Baja Bug is on my short list. <laughs> Are they in a frontier this year? Hopefully. I assume. Uh, we'll find out next week. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't know that they've said yet. No, yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Nobody's yet. told me anything. That's just a 100% assumption on my part. What did I share? Your it doesn't home, feel your, like I shared your, the right thing. Your that was your family. Your desktop. Yeah. Yeah. Those kids. There's it was there. actually like a warning, like pop up, perfectly placed over your your children's faces. It was for the printer. Yes, uh, still there. No, no we, we got, got we got the rally okay. video. <laughs> this is how I want. I want to do something like this style for like a trip that we do. All right, so well, it would be so cool. Not to copy or anything, but yeah. we won't copy because we would try and it wouldn't be as good. But right, it would right. be. Yes. Oh, that map overlay. Come on. Yeah, they did such a good job with this. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. edit well enough to do stuff like this. I can shoot it, but I need somebody else to make it look amazing. That's fair. Mm -hmm. That's all right. 
So yeah. cool. On our job. I just want to go Anyways. hang out in the desert again now. Yes. The <laughs> desert is one of my Seriously. favorite places. It's because it can kill you at any moment. And it's beautiful. Yeah. That too. We love the mountains and the desert. And that's pretty well, let's much. Let's go back and forth it. between the two. I need <laughs> sounds I ideal. need to find a way to combine Glacier and oh. Southern Utah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like if I can smash them closer together. Kyrgyzstan. Like, is that where that's that is? Northern, Northern Pakistan. Maybe? Oh, maybe. Maybe Northern know. Pakistan. Okay. Sure. That seems a lot farther away than just where Montana oh. and Utah is. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. I'm going to watch this, this Rivian video now. Isn't what? the Arctic <laughs> technically the desert? Antarctica is technically a desert. Oh. Isn't like North, North, North Canada technically a desert? Tundra? Yeah, isn't the tundra technically a desert? Uh, it would be about the percentage of rainfall or precipitation each year. I don't, off okay. the top of right. my head, I know I have taught a life science middle school class where I talked about Antarctica being desert like conditions, but I don't know about the Arctic. Hmm. Circle back on that. Yeah. yeah that's that a out. quick Google search away. So Arctic circle joke. Okay. On that note. <laughs> I got it. I totally got it. Yeah. Thank you. So oh. good. So uh. bad. All right. <laughs> Whether it's a desert or not, it's nice up there. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. It looks beautiful. After it's being cool. my favorite part of being in Montana in the middle of the summer was like it was daylight till 10. Yeah. North and I was like, too. I need to go farther north. I yep. I love the daylight. Yes. <laughs> yes. I don't want to be up there in the winter. I want to be up there in the summer. Yeah. But I, I hate mosquitoes. Like 4 a.m. I also hate mosquitoes. Right? They are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> so netting matters. <laughs> Anyways, okay. uh, we'll wrap this up because Ross is definitely getting tired. Yeah, it's it's he's got an early morning. <laughs> very, very are you 10 10 44 over there? 10 44. Been up <laughs> since 5 44. <laughs> Time right. to go to bed. Yep. Way past bedtime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, what are you? <laughs> Never mind. What do I what? No, not going there. Not going there tonight. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're good. Okay, text me later. I'm really nope, curious. We're good. To... I, it's, no, we're. I mean, also, we so, over there too. Okay, <laughs> then. Uh, you can rate this show on iTunes. We can? <laughs> you can, Anyone <laughs> can. <laughs> some people have that's the amazing uh, part uh oh, this God. one might not get totally, the best totally rating who knows I, it, <laughs> and not because of our guests because we have struggled tonight uh and only one time do we call the raptor a bronco that's way better than last week because that was at least 15 times last week Yikes. uh you can like and subscribe to our channel on youtube they also post on youtube uh dust to glory right yeah yeah it's easy to find yeah super easy uh, I haven't written anything for Hooniverse lately, so um, you should check out Hooniverse because Sedona wrote something that's awesome Sedona wrote uh, an on Hooniverse about an awesome Baja bug. Um, Ross hasn't written anything either, has he? Have you? I wrote the Land Rover review. The Discovery? Discovery review. Is that is that up? Is it live? Yeah, that was up like two no, weeks homie, ago. I don't time time doesn't exist anymore. I don't know what you're and talking about. And I'm gonna about. have a C8 Corvette review in a few weeks. <laughs> nice. On all That's terrains. So much to do with off-roading. Actually, I could drive it to there's a dirt road nearby. Yeah, yeah. You should drive yeah. it down to your road. Yeah. Yeah. I wanna see that. I wanna like 200, how about 100 miles on dirt in a C8? That might not be terrible, but okay. I could certainly do 100 miles per hour on dirt. <laughs> allegedly, 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 you could do yeah. 100 miles. <laughs> yeah, it's hey, private road. road. On this Corvette, private yeah. roads in Bedford. I did. Not he told public. me he booked the the C8 convertible. And I was like, did you tell Chevy you just bought a two door coupe already? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Jeep I just bought is about the same dollar figure as the dollar figure worth of options on the C8 convertible that's going around. So. That sounds about right. You'll have. Yeah, a great I'm gonna. Time. I'm gonna employ my brother to uh, take photos on of the car on dirt. This is a good, good. idea. Yeah. yeah, good idea. Have some fun. Yeah. Try to find the angle that no one else is shooting. <laughs> yeah. Very sideways is the angle that will be gotten. Uh, you can follow Richard and Ashley. It's at Dust the Glory, and then Ashley's at Dust the Glory underscore Ash. Yes. Whew. 
Nailed it. it. Got it. Uh, Ross is at no, not like the one from friends. I'm at overlanding dad and we've done a show. That's it. That is it. You did a great job. Thank Five you. stars. Uh, Plus, out of 10, and 10 stars. Thank you so much for coming back. Guys. Thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for having us. I still fun. love that it's pitch black here and you guys still have daylight. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Like we both look outside. It's yeah. Correct. Right. Like, yeah, to confirm like the it. daylight. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if maybe it was just the lamp behind us, but no, no. it's the sun. No, it definitely looks like sunshine. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's and natural. No crow this time, or was that a raven? Uh, probably a crow. Last, oh, last time there was one that talked the entire episode that when I went Where back and did. Oh, yeah. We're I remember. We're in a cabin. Yeah, yeah the tiny. tiny house. Yeah. I thought about that. We went on a series of cat sitting endeavors after that. I don't know <laughs> if we about that or not. Yeah. Of course you can. Yeah. No. You should write an uh, article about cat sitting on the road. <laughs> it's like, like how the pandemic led us to be cat sitters. Yeah, like animals cats. of the journey. Exactly. Do these yeah. posts write themselves? I don't know what you're worried about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've ended up taking care of some really like like dogs in peculiar situations. Like, oh, this guy's gonna go, you know fix the inner axle boot on somebody's Tacoma for three hours. Also, watch my dog. <laughs> All right. All right.